SpaceX has been in the news as well. Yeah, I know there's a lot more going on in the world than SpaceX. So before we get to that, I just wanna make it clear that I, of course, support all of the peaceful protests and demands for equality and accountability for police brutality. Some of you are probably relieved to take a break and listen to jokes about SpaceX, uh, and those are coming. But some people are probably thinking, how dare this jackass stay silent on the protests? After all, I know this looks like a political show, but this is a technology and futurism show, and I haven't really found a tech angle on this year's second apocalypse. If this were a robot apocalypse, no brainer. Also, this is just one show on my channel. I do gear reviews, stand-up comedy, and personal vlogs, so I absolutely plan on sharing more thoughts and experience of being out in the protests on my channel. It just won't be in this style. I know at times this show has gotten political, Yang Gang, but that's only because UBI is a potential solution to automation and the growth of artificial intelligence. The major theme is, of this show is the impending technological tidal wave leading to humanity merging with AI in a symbiotic metamorphosis to pure energy consciousness that explodes into the universe at the speed of light. I know this show seems like The Daily Show and Last Week Tonight, but there are a lot more differences than topic choice. Like Last Week Tonight has HBO money, I have unemployment. The Daily Show's backed by Viacom, who apparently can't afford to send Trevor Noah a suit and a teleprompter, yet I have those things in my bedroom. But hey, if the protesters start using super cool technology to teleport from place to place, I'll be all over it. If looters master anti-gravity, I'll be covering them nonstop. If the National Guard comes rolling in Marty McFly style on hoverboards, yeah, I'll be talking about it. So with that, I'll just say, as a Trekkie, I'm excited to talk about how SpaceX is advancing us toward a future where we all can live peacefully, not just with each other, but with other alien species from all over the galaxy. And it could happen sooner than we think because things change fast in the knee of the curve. <laughs> Welcome to Knee of the Curve, I'm Emmett Short. Don't get left in the past, hit subscribe to stay up to date on intergalactic Tinder. If I make you laugh or you learn a little something or both and you feel like supporting the show, there's merch on Teespring. You can check out the description for links to Patreon, PayPal, crypto, but most importantly, share this with the sci-fi nerd in your life. Let's get into it. SpaceX made history with the launch of their manned Crew Dragon spacecraft. This marks the first time in history a private company has launched coronavirus into space. Of course, I'm joking, and I'm not the only one. Are you worried ab about coronavirus as these additional astronauts arrive? I, I was joking around with my colleague, my crewmates last night and said, hey, maybe we should have them come in through the hatch and, and make a, a hard left and we'll isolate them here in the corner for a couple weeks before we'll, we'll treat them to a meal. But after all the precautions and rehearsals with the distant goodbyes from family, on the actual launch day, Doug Hurley and his wife do this. Supporting the families, us working together. You got coronavirus glove, bro. We don't know how this virus reacts in zero G. This is how Alien starts. <laughs> Look, I'm just glad we can joke about this event. On behalf of every fan of SpaceX and Tesla, Elon Musk and America, can I just say, oh, thank fucking God they didn't die. I haven't wanted people to not die this much since, oh, never mind, I forgot it's 2020. That's just every waking moment now. Being in quarantine during riots while watching this launch was like, hey, how about take a break from generally hoping people don't die to intensely hope two people don't die for about 20 minutes. And I gotta say, it kinda worked. If those two guys can survive a 20 minute flight to space, maybe, just maybe, I can leave my apartment to buy milk. And it wasn't just human lives at stake, it was the survival of a best friendship. We've been close friends for since we started as astronauts almost 20 years ago. So being lucky enough to get to fly with your best friend is uh, kind of a, I think there's a lot of people that wish they could do that and we're lucky enough to do it. That is a Dorbs. I think they need their own couple name. Leave your favorites in the comments. My top three are Bug, Duncan, or Benkley. 
I'm going with Bankley for the rest of the piece. The cutest part is what Bankley said they were looking forward to most about the mission. The thing I'm most looking forward to uh, uh, is, is actually ending up in the water safely at the end of the mission and, and seeing how we both uh, go through that experience of uh, um, I'm expecting um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of vomiting maybe to happen in the yeah. end game. So when we yeah. get to that opportunity to do that in the water together, it's kind of a weird thing to say, but that's the, I'm looking for that kind of celebratory uh, event. Yes, the celebratory vomiting at the end of the mission will be, will be excellent. These guys can't wait to vomit together. It's so beautiful. I just want someone to vomit with. These guys get me. I have a celebratory vomit on almost every birthday and most Tuesdays, so I get it. Ah, these guys also got to name a spacecraft. Without further ado, we would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. We chose Endeavor for a few reasons. One, because of this incredible Endeavor, uh, NASA, SpaceX, and the United States has been on uh, since the end of the shuttle program back in 2011. The other reason we named it uh, Endeavor is a little more personal to Bob and I. Uh, we both had our first flights on shuttle Endeavor, and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. I mean, it also has to be because of the Star Trek ship USS Endeavor that everyone knows was instrumental in the Klingon Civil War by blocking Romulan aid to the Duras faction or how it took part in the battle to repel an invading Borg cube in the Typhon Expanse in 2373, but I'm not gonna rehash a bunch of stuff we all know. I'm just happy they picked a great name for great reasons. These guys are inspiring. These badasses strap themselves into an unproven spacecraft sitting on top of a reusable Falcon 9 rocket, got blasted into orbit, and rendezvoused with the space station. Amazing. And look, I'm not saying I could have done it, but you know, the capsule is fully autonomous. Yeah, I mean, you saw its touch screens in the cockpit, but unless something goes wrong, I'm pretty sure they were playing Cuphead the whole ride up. And in case you're wondering, yeah, the Endeavor does have fart mode. You can see the, the forward view that we had uh, uh, during the maneuvers that we recently did. Still, don't get me wrong, these guys are badasses. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could have sat there though for 20 minutes and like not died. A couple of Xanax, no problem. It's cool. I'll name a ship one day. I will name a spaceship. And that is actually the promise of this recent mission. A future where traveling to space is commonplace. It's days like this that bring humanity leaps and bounds closer to our ultimate dream of our species. Me, Emmett Short, Space Cowboy. We've wanted this for a long time. I mean, I prefer cow man. Not sure why that's not a word, but whatever. Of course, you know, I will need a few biotech breakthroughs to keep me alive long enough for nanobots to turn my body into a cyborg so I can survive the robot apocalypse. But after that, it's cow man time, baby. And it was awesome to see how emotional Elon got when asked about it. I'm getting choked up, sorry. I, I, I'm not sure I can answer the question. Oh, he was asked about the SpaceX launch, not me becoming a space cowman, although I'm sure he wants that from me. We're tight. He once responded to a tweet, so we're boys. I'll roll the clip. Anyway, get get it choked up here, so. It, 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 it's, it really, this, yeah, I don't, I'm getting choked up, sorry, I, I, I'm not sure I can answer the question any more than that, except, um, yeah, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure he gets home safely. My best bud Elon is in touch with his emotions, but did you see how he acknowledged his emotions yet still dominated them? No tears, sheer willpower, like a fucking alien robot. That's how we get to Mars. Besides being super manly men who aren't afraid of emotions but also dominate them, the reason me and Elon get along so good is because we're both comedians. Check out this sick burn he unleashed on Russia's space agency chief, Dmitry Rogozin. The trampoline is working. <laughs> oh, you might not know what that's in reference to. 
It's an inside joke. I know what you're in, inside about. joke, yeah. It's an inside joke between NASA and Russia. Okay, back in 2014, the U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia over the whole Ukraine thing, and the sanctions affected Russia's space industry. Stop me if you've heard this one. And Rogozin was prime minister back then, and he tweeted, I suggest to the USA to bring their astronauts to the International Space Station using a trampoline. Rewind to the future when Elon just said, The trampoline is working. <laughs> the trampoline is working. Mm. Oh, that's scotch. Oh. Now, I do have to say the beef is not as beefy as it appears. Maybe it's just politics, but Rogozin did just tweet his congratulations to NASA and even said he liked Elon's joke. Still, Elon's a funny guy and a meme ninja on his Twitter feed, which is why it's a shame he recently tweeted he's taking a break from Twitter. But if that means more time concentrating on SpaceX, I'll take it because this guy took a long shot rocket company and led him in a fierce competition with Boeing to be the first private company to send humans into orbit. Boeing, by the way, most immature name for a rocket company ever, Boeing. Who names their company Boeing? Was Boeing taken? Oh, that's right. It was founded by famed aviator William Boyoyoyoing in 1916. Boeing, sorry, Boeing is actually the most mature rocket company ever, which is why it's kind of embarrassing for them how SpaceX just ate their lunch. I mean, how do you let a brand new rocket company leapfrog you with reusable rockets that let them charge 60% less per launch? That's right, NASA's gonna pay 90 million for every launch with Boyoyoyoing and just 55 million with SpaceX. And the cheaper it is to get to space, the faster we get to intergalactic tender. Huge thanks to the patrons and YouTube members funding the channel. If you like tech news and jokes, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss one or even becoming a supporter like these awesome people. Thanks to Ryan Stout and Jeremy Huntley for their writing efforts. Check out their work in the description. Ryan's got three comedy albums, pick one up. Definitely leave a comment about what you think in this of uh, this video and I'll do my best to respond. If you'd like to pitch in on episodes or just chat about futurism with other like-minded people, join my Discord chat room where I actually post view links of the script so you can peek in on how they develop and chat me up about joke ideas. Find me on the show on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, just click one of the videos coming up to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.